live in the dungeon. This is the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Nick Strawn. And this is episode 97. This is Jaws. We're going back to 1975. Yeah. And this is quite a freaking classic, I think. Oh. Uh, not to give away how I feel about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> a local sheriff, a marine biologist, and an old seafarer team up to hunt down a great white shark wrecking havoc. Reek- reeking, okay. Wrecking? Hunt down wrecking? a great white shark wrecking, wrecking havoc. Wrecking? Havoc. What is wrecking havoc? This they actually spelled havoc. like that. Yeah, I know. Okay. So this isn't my words. I'm gotcha. just reading yeah, it. But right. great white gotcha. shark wreaking havoc in a beach resort. You know, how many times have you seen this film? You're like me, seen it a million times. Probably, yeah. I was kind of looking at the beginning at the beginning beach scene. I was trying to look for something new and I found it. Something I really liked that was that I thought was really interesting was the one bell. After the guy passes out and the screaming in the water and all the rest of that, then there's just that one bell on the boy going off. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ding. Ding. And it was brilliant. Because I mean, too much stuff. You know, just like we were just talking about um, Piranha, right? Mm-hmm. And the acting and directing in it was was uh, it wasn't nearly as good as Jaws at all. But one of the things that it didn't give you at any given point, which is definitely the sign of uh, of uh, immaturity, is time. Mm-hmm. And the time, the quiet time at the end of that, um, where the screams are still in your head and just getting quieter and quieter and quieter and and melding into the sound of that bell. Yeah, that was awesome. That was really awesome. That was great. And it was also like the visual too, because it was uh, yeah, because you just saw it. It was off in the distance, and you just saw it just gently rocking. So this all about sound. This movie. It is a, and actually, an awful lot about Academy sound. Awards says it all right there. It's like best original musical score. Oh, best, best the music was amazing. Best sound mixing and best picture, best film editing. Yeah, but but the the sound This uh, is when John Williams was still good too. John Williams was amazing. Yeah. I I mean the, the I think sound kind of was so the more big. recent stuff though. Yeah, well, not as not as cool. But um uh, uh by the way, I wanted to know if those were union crabs. <laughs> right. That were crawling around on the body, uh, right? Um, yes, were they? I don't know. Union crabs. I wonder if there was catering for the crabs. Were they makeup. They were they extras. Extras <laughs> crabs. Were they just extras? Were, were they extras? Uh, ca- dogs dressed as crabs. You don't know. Huh. Y- you huh. don't know. So, well, going back to the sound though, if you watch this movie without the music or without the. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't really be the same. Like it would be empty. Like you know, because you have the well build up, the build up, the build up, the build up. It is it, it, it. No, it, it's true, and the build up is excellent. Uh, and and the uh, the shark, the sound actually helps. Right, make take, it scary. Take the curse off of the shark because there yeah. were there were there were shots that the shark was amazing. And I have to say, oh, yeah. they always they they did this in thirty feet of water. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that I you, you know, me being me, I was trying to think of how they were rigging a lot of this stuff. And they must have had like an incredibly big weight mm-hmm. that they dragged around and put underwater, 30 feet underwater, a, as an anchoring point to pull things along to. Right. You know, uh, uh, like, um, you know, it, it, a point off of camera. Because, you see, if if you see those floats... Going away from you, which they were often, and there's nothing over here, right? You have to have a point mm-hmm. somewhere. You have to have a point so that you can. It's one of the natural like a pulley system. It natural, yeah. you have to have a pulley system, right? Right. So there must have been an, an enormous weight that they dragged around from place to place in, in order to do all those shots with dragging the shark around. You know, uh, and how much better did that look in that twelve? Days of terror. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, the Bruce was Bruce was great. Um, Bruce was great in some things. There were some things that he wasn't that great at. But in going from point to point, 
it, it was just great. I mean, that, the rigging was amazing. And this was shot in Massachusetts, in Martha's Vineyard? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. There was a, uh, th- th- there's a, uh, there's a, a, a fact that I've heard many, many, many times that uh, the, the shooting schedule went from uh, 50 days to 150 days. And that <laughs> on the very last day, on the very last day of shooting, they shot the uh, the shark blowing up, right? <laughs> right. And um, the crew was going to get together and uh, and throw Spielberg uh, in the water, and so he set up the final shot, and then <laughs> and then got on a plane and headed back to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> so he literally wasn't there for the explosion. Wow. Well, that's the second unit thing this anyway. This is pretty early on in his career, too. Yeah, I mean, he had done uh, the one in the car with the little car. Right. And uh, he had done, uh, I think that he had worked with uh, Lucas on Used Cars. <laughs> I love to use cars. Yeah, that's, Used Cars. That's one of my favorite movies. It's a bizarre one. Yeah, very bizarre. But yeah, before that, there wasn't much going on as far as movies, directing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but let's look at, actually, let's look at this. So he was doing TV before that. Yeah. He was doing TV. For the most part. Yeah. Sugarland Express. That was what I was going to say. So he, he came from there. Uh, and you have to think to yourself that, that there had to be a lot of parallels to, uh, Kevin Costner, who, right. who later on was yeah. doing uh, Waterworld. Right. Yeah. What it's like to shoot in the ocean. It blows water. water Waterworld sucks. had a huge budget. And, yeah. 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 Yeah, and and, and probably because of water, right? Yeah, because and, and you know what? The same thing. I mean, uh, it was it was a big joke when Waterworld was filming. Is like you would be doing a film. It seemed like for a couple months, everybody that would be working on the film, a couple of people would disappear. Right. Then they would come back, and you would find out that they had been working on Waterworld. And the thing is, is they were always faxing back in call sheets, and the call sheets would be. Like they started out being, you, you know, you always have the number of days that you're going to shoot mm-hmm. and the number of days that you have shot. So one out of 50 and you would get, you know, would be rigid. The, the original ones would be one out of 50, two out of 50, three out of 50 and stuff like that. And then after a while you were getting um, 109 out of 50, then 190 out of 50, <laughs> which <laughs> I remember actually seeing one that was like 190 out of oh 50. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's like wow, that's a. Uh... And the thing is, people were going out there, and and, and they got burned out. They they they, yeah. they could only be. It it like kind of everybody kind of had their turn, right? You know, went out and, and worked there and came back, and then worked there and came back, and then yeah, it, I mean, virtually three quarters of the people that did mechanical effects in town and makeup effects worked on wor- <laughs> worked on it at, at some wow. point, but didn't finish it. Yeah, you know? that's crazy. Uh, um, because the water was, the, everything was just incredibly difficult. Well, this, you know, Jaws and, and, was simple. I mean, what, that's one thing I like about this is that Jaws was pretty, I, I saw it, on, I was watching it on Blu-ray, so. Right. I mean, just some of the shots were amazing. Like, an underwater shot with a girl swimming over. Oh, right, right. I mean, yeah. that was like, just the lighting and the way they shot it was perfect. And oh, I was, yeah. It's, 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 but, you know, like the face, uh, uh, one thing, that, one that I've always loved is the face falling Oh yeah, yeah, out of the boat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it, it is such a well. So one thing I like about Spielberg, this yeah. is very clear, is that I mean he's a really good storyteller, but I like his vision, the way he, I guess it's the way he sees it, I guess, and the way it comes across. Because every movie that I've watched of his, they all have he, a similar kind of look. He builds tension, yeah. really well. And the thing is that he does yeah. look is and feel. He, yeah, he builds tension in situations that. Ha- that can have a lot of light in them. Yeah, you know that that's one thing that he did that was really quite un- unusual. Well, it's also the way they shoot it. And yeah, because like, like a, a movie from 1975 looks just as good as some of the movies I've seen. Oh right, now. exactly. <laughs> and it, yeah, no. You, you, and usually you can see things are kind of dated. You know, like yeah. One of my favorite movies is The Boy and His Dog. And if oh, you watch yeah, that now, exactly. it looks very dated. Yeah, like, no, you're you're so. right. Yeah, no, no, I agree. He's uh, the clarity of his vision. Right, uh, it, it, it's all it, about storytelling, which is why this is the perfect it, movie it, for him. And it's 
and it's kind of simple story- storytelling. Yeah, it's just it's linear, and it's like this is what happened next. Right. What happened next, what happened I, next. I swear, Quince uh, telling the story of the Indianapolis. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that, oh, that was just, great. Uh, just, that was like was that was really disturbing because I forgot about that story because I hadn't seen this for a long time. And, it's uh, funny. I was I I was thinking I I'd always been thinking that he started with the story of yeah. of the Indianapolis, but he didn't. Uh, uh, the part th- where, he's in the room where they're doing the, the where, the, where they're comparing the scars. Oh yeah, yeah, is is what <laughs> starts it, and then it moves into right the Indianapolis, and, and that was that was great. That was such a great choice because it had this bonding moment in in comedy, yeah. bonding in comedy. Yeah, and then they're kind of like dragged into the tragedy. Yeah. Uh, it was perfectly timed. It was like, I mean, they were laughing and they were singing. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then all yeah. of a sudden you see the boat. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you see Quint look around like, wait a minute. Yeah, what the Something's hell? Something's happening. But uh, yeah. I had a question about the chalkboard at the beginning. When Quint first shows up oh, yeah, pl- and he does oh. the, the nails on the chalkboard. Yes. I want to know who drew the shark. Did Quint draw the shark? Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> or was somebody yeah, else drawing? It, it was just there. Right. Was, isn't that, wasn't that amazing? I caught that too and I was like, well. Yeah, there's no I, way he wrote that. I, or he did I that. just, you know, what I really wanted is, I wanted just to have somebody just doing the last line, <laughs> and then sitting down, right? Some kid or something, because it was so. Or cool. have him, write. yeah, or him. <laughs> I have a feeling it wasn't him. No, it probably yeah. was not. But so yeah, uh, what's interesting is the story was uh, well, I'm, I was thinking probably was a terror because they did that in New York, but this was. Based in New England in a fake town or a fake island, right. Amityville, right? Amityville, right, right. Did you did you notice that the shark that they uh, the first shark that they had up on the right? The, did you notice it had an arrow in it? <laughs> I didn't notice that it had an arrow in it. <laughs> arrow. I, thought, I guess I didn't wow, look at it very what the closely. Hell is that? <laughs> I do like some of the lines at the very beginning, though. It's like you know when they're talking about the summer town. This needs we need money here. But right. one of the lines was, uh, "We never had any of that kind of trouble in these waters." <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so like what? Yeah, like, it's you know what you know what the problem was? It's those fish. <laughs> it's those fish. Well, oh, oh. Oh, so we're those fish, huh? <laughs> what did you mean by that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah, that's just the whole thing with the oh, bear. Oh, I love and, the bear. The bear has a great sense of yeah. style. I want his suits. Yeah, wanna, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, d- did you notice the early Google? The early no. <laughs> Maybe I did, but I don't know. <laughs> well, he's in the library, or he has the book. Oh right? yeah, and he's, he's reading he's, through the book, but, and he's reading and, about and, sharks. And, and you know what I was yeah. thinking to myself? I, I was thinking early Google. Yeah. That's all I could think of is like, well, that's how they pass information. Like nowadays, y- you would show somebody typing in, yeah. and Google would come up, and like you knew that information was on its way. How- so in this case, it was like there's a book, and and there was like three cases through there that w- where he opens up the book, and there's you know some information there that they really need. Exactly. Well, how great was Roy Scheider when he was in great. his house and like when he's reading the book. Right, <laughs> and his wife scares the shit out of him. Right, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just that one little scene. Yeah, I like. yeah, it was great. And by the way, that's my dream house to have like a house like we're surrounded by water. Oh yeah, someday. Yeah, no but, thanks. That's okay. I, I live right close to the water. I don't need it again. I only lived there for like twenty, twenty four years, and I uh, absolutely every day headed to work the other way, and I was a block away from the ocean. Yeah, that's and right. How, see, and also he hated water at the beginning. That was a nice little. I, yes, and it, I, I like point. his. Yeah, and because he changed over time. Did you notice the red shooting stir twice? Yeah, yeah. I wrote that down. Like yeah. there were like, uh, I said, I was like, is it a plane or a spaceship? <laughs> and it happened like <laughs> yeah. twice. Yeah, and it was a t- and 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 it was a terrible. And it was very clear on the Blu-ray. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and it was incredibly bad. Right. That visual, yeah. You know, I was like, "Wow, that's you know." I thought well, it was like a. They, why did they bother? It was not that good. Maybe Steven Spielberg is saying, "In the future, I'm going to be doing a, a <laughs> movie do called this ET, and I'll, I'll, and I'll be doing well." <laughs> uh, oh, did and, and so I'll the like, cast? Let's talk about I, Richard Dreyfuss is amazing. This is like early. Oh yeah. I mean, I guess he was acting before that, but yeah. But Robert Shaw takes his whole yeah, Robert thing. Shaw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just. <laughs> uh, but the amazing. three of them together. I, oh I, yeah, they were they were, they were just incredible. I like when the body popped out of the hole when the guy was uh, pulling the shark out of the boat. Yeah, underwater, <laughs> and the dead body just kind of floated. 
Oh, uh, uh, Peter Benchley, who who wrote wrote the, the original story, mm-hmm. uh, n- never liked. Uh, we also the, wrote the screenplay. Yeah, he but he he didn't like the part that uh, Spielberg came up with uh, with the uh, diving tank blowing up. Uh, and and oh. Spielberg finally said, "Look, I've been I I've been stringing, I've been dragging them through the crap for twelve hours. <laughs> Anything that I say is real at this point." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! So yeah, I can understand. So that. I want to know why the beach was so busy because uh, my happy ass would be in a different state if there were all these shark attacks. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, why were there still tourists there? Well, it, I I love the fact that in twelve uh in, in the twelve days of terror, right? You know how long was the shark? You remember? <laughs> it was eight feet. Yeah. They said, "Oh, it's an eight foot shark." Oh my god, this is tw- twenty yes, twenty five. This one's a lot bigger. Twenty five, yeah, yeah. It's like I said. Okay, why is the beach so busy? You know, some <laughs> is going to go down. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. But <laughs> you know what? I there is something I have to give Spielberg credit for is. The using the barrels, oh yeah, and using all these devices so that you don't have to see the shark. Yeah, so that it, and and the barrels are brilliant from the point of view of they're a measurement. Yeah, they're a measurement of the strength of the shark. Yeah, the the I, I mean, and even Quinn even says uh, there's no way you can handle three. Barrels. Yeah, there's no way that he can handle three, and they just get dragged. Yeah, they go underwater, and you're, yeah. and you're going, huh? Yeah, but but it was such a it was a great device because. How many times do we talk about you don't want to see the shark? Right. You just you can't see the well. There were the, the monster. You don't see the shark very much in this. Right. One. You don't see the shark very much, and which is good because you know there are a couple of times that the shark didn't look that right. good. You yeah. know, yeah. but but in general it did. Yeah. And and the thing is, is there was so much using using devices like the barrels and the hooks and the cage. Yeah, you know oh, the cage. Yeah, and and you, you know you, I mean, he's just tearing up the cage. Yeah, and he's yeah. tearing. And the thing is, is that's easy. That's an easy thing to do from the point of view of if he's tearing up the cage, you can take his jaws and and yeah. literally attach them to the cage and shake it. Yeah, you know. And 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 I was thinking of 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 all these devices and stuff are making it so that the less that we see the shark. Now, when I was a kid, I saw this in the theaters, and I was. I was probably about 17 and um, I had this girl on a date. I think it was 17 or wow, 18. I was like one. <laughs> 17 Sorry. or 18, I had a girl out on on a date and, and I remember we were watching that and uh, the line just before he does, you, you know when the the shark just comes up out of the ah, like this yeah, yeah. and he says, we're going to have to get a a bigger boat. I think I actually might have wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember being really uncomfortable from that point on. Right now, um, well, I remember. See, I, the reason why I mentioned the body popping out of the boat. Yeah, because I think the first couple times I saw that, it scared me. Like <laughs> this time, I was yeah. expecting it. But yeah, it right. Like, no, you, you're right. It's I. I did that too. I. I was like, for the first time, I actually expected it. Right. You know, I was like, oh, see, I can live through this. <laughs> You didn't wet yourself. You wet yourself for I, different I, reasons. I yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I I wet myself because I'm really freaking old. That's right. <laughs> oh, I liked some of the teasers. Like there was some little like some comedy a little bit. Like remember the old guy was swimming and it looked like a shark might be coming towards somebody. Yeah, yeah. And oh yeah, the, right, right. The prank the, that the, the kid, girls kid played. The fr- you know what? I, one of the things I like is uh, uh, the video game. Yeah, the Jaws. early video game yeah. w- with the the shark or, pointing yeah. across it. Yeah, yeah. Love but it. I like the little girls with the fin when they were like, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> it was great. Well, no, it wasn't bo- girls; it was boys. I think. Sh- how the shark get into the pond? I had that question. I was like, I'm trying to figure out how the logistics of the shark, this huge twenty foot shark getting into the pond, and how deep was the pond? <laughs> yeah, well, it was. <laughs> it sure looked great on the way out. You know, right. the, the two fins. It looked awesome. I like the it, hey, chief. Put out the fire, would you? I like when the leg drops to the bottom of the pond because you don't. Yeah, yeah you know, just yeah. like. And then there are a couple scenes like that that were similar, like where the where the boy's missing, and then you see the raft all chewed up and flat, yeah, and it's just yeah. washing that up was, on the shore. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice this? <laughs> I thought that this was such a great touch. Um, when the boat gets down to like 
the entire main structure is under the water and it's just the conning tower and the the wooden upper structure <laughs> and there's there's a a little tiny set of jaws about like, yeah, the, like yeah. this big you know uh nailed to it uh-huh. yeah <laughs> i like it <laughs> on the boat. That, yeah <laughs> on the boat i thought that that was great that <laughs> so there's so many movies that try to be jaws but i don't think anything's ever come close i mean piranha in its own way maybe a little bit but jaws they keep trying to make the like timing is perfect. I mean, even like the, the, the sequels to Jaws, like Jaws 2. Oh, and, right, right. No, the trash. No, c- yeah. compared to Jaws itself, the timing, right? The building of uh, of tension. You and also, you have to remember, and, and this is kind of I know that this is going to sound really like a funky thing to say, but probably one of the things that helped a lot was how bad the shark Bruce himself was. <laughs> right, okay. because they had a lot of problems with that. But the thing that I noticed overall in, in filming complicated, problematic uh, uh, special effects, and I had a lot of experience with it, is that I know it sounds weird, but it has a tendency to hone your craft. You you become a better editor. You become a better director. Because you're trying to think your way. I mean, it's it's a crucible effect in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of like burns off all that crap. The more that you have to sit back and take your and, and get your crew together and think over a situation like that, right, because yeah. you don't do it alone. You know, it isn't it isn't like Spielberg said. Well, I've got the you know we're going to do it this and this yeah. and this and that'll solve it. I can guarantee you that that didn't happen. And they didn't have any like computer guys to animate. Something. Right, right. I, I I can guarantee you that it's like the first Star Wars and Clone Wars. <laughs> it was totally right, different. Totally different. But <laughs> but I, I'm saying that it was a group of people coming together mm-hmm. and saying, "Well, we're going to shoot it like this, and we'll shoot it like this, and we'll use we'll shoot more of the boys, and we'll yeah. pull the boys down." And I think it, you have a lot of perfectionists too on this this uh, team, like right. Spielberg and his, right. his people that work well, with them. And and every way that you tried to to show movement of the creature without having the creature there, like dragging the boat around, mm-hmm. you know, dragging dragging, especially when they're dragging it backwards. Dr- when they were dragging it backwards, yeah, and then and then slewed it around like that. Yeah, I mean. Every every one of those was just so effective. I mean, you talk about effective. How about this? Is is think of the shot of just the boards on the inside of the right. boat. Oh, cracking, yeah. cracking, and, yeah. and the water spraying in. Mm-hmm. Think of how effective that shot was. You know, because you first of all you you've done the correct thing. You you you're now you're claustrophobic well it's also the timing too because it, it was like this high point where they're you know laughing and drinking right, and right. having a great time exactly doom is coming their way right in in, in the way that you know that it's coming this way is that insert shot of yeah. that of yeah. the water coming through the cracks and stuff like that all of these things broaden the scope of 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 the tools that you can use mm-hmm. to to create tension Right and, and and that way, you know the 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 little that we see of the shark, you know, it, it is more convincing. Right, and definitely a lot more convincing. Yeah, I, I also like the fact that you, as as the movie gets going to the end, you don't see this. Sh- you see the shark a little bit more for each attack. Yeah, like the first one you don't see anything. You just right. see blood. Right. And then you see more and more till the very end. You see the shark actually try to devour the boat. Right, right, it, it, exactly. and the guys on it, obviously. and the guys on it. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, and, and and the thing that's great is that the second sequence is from the inside of the cabin coming through the side of the cabin. Right, you know, which is which. You have to remember that you know that there's no laziness involved there. You know, it's like. Yeah, we're gonna shoot this sequence right. This is another everything inside, set. and yeah, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. No, it's it, it's uh, and that must be like for an actor, that must be challenging too, because you have to like you know do all these different like emotions. Yeah, in yeah. the same space. 
at different you know different points of the movie obviously so you have different things going on yeah part of the reason that they filmed it where they did is because they they had five miles uh it five miles out at 30 feet oh oh okay. it, it was the yeah. same distance down it was the and, and and there was nothing obstructing it yeah. so that they they knew exactly how deep it was so that they could work with the shark yeah so that they could they could set depths and and actually anchor it in places and pull it and, and just and, the mechanics of it too like the, the animatronics the uh, mm. i know they they were dealing with that underwater <laughs> right yeah. challenging uh. especially in 1975 Oh yeah, so, yeah. And then the foam. I, I know they had trouble with the foam initially. Like, yeah, I'm sure they did. <laughs> I saw a documentary a long time ago. Yeah, so did I. Don't I. Remember the details, like... but yeah, I mean, I don't have anything other, than, anything else to say other than here's the swimming with bow legged women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Well, uh, okay, you're gonna go with that one. We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah, that was a good line. <laughs> But not as good as Quince. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Where's my chalkboard? Oh, God. Oh, God, I hate that noise. Actually, I don't hate that noise as much as... Computer, you know you're going to... Computer mouse is going... <laughs> yeah, but you know you're going to add that noise in right Oh, here, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, I think that's it. Yes, I think we're done. Woo-hoo! Oh, wait, we forgot to rate it. Oh. Oh, well. How uh, many shark teeth would you give this one? You know what? I got to say, it's as close to a perfect film as you can get. Um, 4.7. I actually really want to give it a five. Yeah, I'd lo- but I it's would. Like, it's hard to do that. You know what I mean? You know what? I, I It's funny. What is your benchmark for a five? This probably hits all of the benchmarks I have. Yeah, I mean, the, this so is really I, it. I get well, okay, four point nine because of the shooting stars or whatever those things were. Yeah. But but I, I mean, think they might have been planes. Uh, okay, so so Who this knows? is your benchmark film. I think See, so. My benchmark film is and always will be Blade Runner. But I put things in categories. Well, I would give Blade Runner a five. Yeah, original, five. Yeah, for exactly sure. five. Yeah. But this one, it's like, well, this is a different category. Like I kind of categorize things, I guess. <laughs> right. Like. War See, movies, I, for example, like I, that's why I asked about why can't anybody make a good shark horror movie or a shark like movie like this, right? But there's been a lot of good war movies that I like equally, mm, but right. I like Saving Private, Saving Private Ryan, which there's probably no coincidence who, who directed that one too, but you know because I like his films, I guess. There you I don't go. know, but I would give Saving Private Ryan a five. Maybe I'd lose points a little bit for some of the backstory with the anyway. Yeah. Blah blah blah. We're not doing that movie. Yep. So yep. yeah. So I'm at four point nine. You're you're Jaws. at a four point nine. And, and it's I'm only because of the 7. flaws with the zoom going across the sky. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. You know, you gotta have it. something. You gotta have something. Yeah. So without those, if somebody could edit those out and I'll watch it again, then I'll give it a five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well there you go. I think Dude. <laughs> Put that on your spreadsheet. Do 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 do. This is Kurt Thomas along with Mick Strong. Thank you for listening to the Dream Warrior Review. If you have any questions or just have feedback for our show, we welcome them at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com. Of course, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter as well. As always, please follow us and tell your friends about us too.